Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating a 2D side scroller in Unreal Engine 4. My name's Wayne. I've been taking you for all these episodes in regards to our 2D side scroller pretty much journey. I mean, this has been going on for a while and it's all thanks to you guys that keep me going with your comments, your feedback, your forum posts. People are now sharing this all over the web. I mean, one of my friends' friends shared my video, which is pretty insane. Um, he, he was like, Wayne, I just seen, you know, seen your video being posted. I was like, yeah, get on there. Um, so it is growing, which is absolutely amazing. And I want to thank all of you so much for that. Um, just making this a very good tutorial. Um, and I'm really enjoying making these video clips. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how do we sort of limit our character with the amount of bullets that he can shoot. Because currently he's pretty OP. I mean, he can just keep shooting forever and um, nothing ever stops. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going and going. Um, and yeah, it, it's something we don't really want to happen. So we're going to look at a few things today. We're going to add something to our HUD. Um, so obviously that's going to be quite um, self-explanatory. We're going to add our um, current bullets to uh, the HUD. And then we're going to look at, um, obviously we need variables. So we need to set those up. So we're going to look at that. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit of math to control um, the amount of shooting that goes on uh, inside the game itself. So without further ado, um, let's get ourselves started into our scene. So last session we got to the point of making these checkpoint systems and etc uh, we will move into more advanced stuff again further on the tutorials i got things lined up for you like uh, making new levels making menu systems um, when you die you get to choose to start the level again or you can um, go to the checkpoint those types of things we're going to look at um, in in future tutorials to come so keep your eyes peeled remember obviously like subscribe to keep up to date with those so to create this system really easy the very the first thing we need to look at is creating some variables for our character okay now the variables we want to create there's only two we want to find out one his current bullets so we want to work out how many bullets he's currently got in the system now if we compile and save that's an integer value and that's going to be set to zero because we're going to be able to reload his bullets and stuff um, and things like that with if you request i mean if you guys say to me wait listen we want to reload system give me a shout in the comments and i'll definitely make you one of them if you want one of those in, in your game we also need another variable and we're going to call this max amount of bullets so we can control his bullet control um so we can actually limit how many bullets he can have now imagine if you had more than one gun obviously you make different variables for each one of those guns um, and you can restrict how many bullets you want in those guns and etc so in this case that max bullets I'm going to set to uh, let's just say 20 um, so we'll control here I can have 20 shots um, and then obviously if he runs out then he won't be able to do anything else inside the game unless he picks up an ammo box or I don't know anything you want to put inside your game now obviously nothing's going to happen because we want to display how many bullets he currently has now to do this we need to jump into our HUD so remember we made a folder called HUD and open up your HUD display now remember, I'm not the artistic type of guy. I'm just here to show you how to blueprint and stuff. So I'm just going to grab a text box and throw it into the corner. Just so for reference sake, we'll just chuck it in there. I mean, you could make it look fantastic. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to make it look. Now, obviously, we bind the text because we wanted to attach um, the information of our bullets. Um, and what we can put in here is we can pretty much steal what we have in our previous one. It's very simple to do, but just, it's easier for me to just steal so that the tutorial just speeds up a bit more. But we obviously we don't want to grab the character's life, so we can actually take that out because we don't want that. But what we do want to get hold of is our current bullets. So we're going to drag off this node, and we're going to type in get current bullets. And we're just going to attach that into our return value, and that's going to print off his current bullets that he has. So let's compile and save. And let's play the game now. So if we play, you should be able to see that he's currently got zero bullets, and that's what we set it to. Remember, we set him to have no bullets, and obviously, we're going to set it so that we can give him bullets and stuff inside his blueprint. And that's pretty much it for the HUD. I mean, we don't have to go any further than that. So all we did was just cast the character to get this information, and we're just printing it off into our HUD. Pretty simple, right? What we need to do now is, is we need to set him with some bullets. Okay, so we have got an, a section for event start. So when the game starts, we need to give him some bullets. And all we do is drag off our sequence. I'm going to set current bullets. So when the game starts, we need to set them with some bullets. It's a bit unfair if we give them nothing. So we're going to get our max bullets. We're going to get that, and we're just going to shove that into there. 
So basically when the game starts, you'll start off then with 30 bullets. So let's check, so compile, save and play. If you look on the top right hand side corner, you'll notice we've got 20 bullets. Good, so we know the system's not working. Obviously a bit more to go, but um, we know that we've now got bullets when the game starts. But now how do we start setting it up to say, for example, when we shoot, it subtracts a value? Well, we are gonna play with the shooting animation section here, but we're gonna make a custom event to start off with. So a custom event, All right? And we're gonna call this um, bullet, let's just call this bullet sub for subtraction of the bullet, All right? And on here, we're gonna get our current bullets. So we're gonna get that, let me zoom in for you, sorry. So we're gonna get our current bullets. We're gonna drag off this node, I'm gonna say minus. So we're gonna say integer minus integer, and we're gonna subtract the one. So basically every time we click um, the button, it's gonna subtract one from our current bullets. And all we really need to do then is just set our current bullets. So set our current bullets, and obviously that will set it to a new value. And we can call this now whenever we want. Remember, I like custom events. I mean, some of you don't like them, but um, I, I, I like using these pretty much all the time. I think they're pretty cool. You can pull them whenever you need. So now we go back to our shooting animation. We can now tinker with this section here. Now what we can do is, so after the shooting animation starts to play, we can call this event. So bullet sub. So we're going to call that function. Just like that. So compile and play, and let's see what happens. If I start shooting, you can see it starts subtracting. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? However, you, I don't know if you noticed, I was very quick there, sorry about that, but you'd notice if I kept on clicking, it's, it, it carried on going and it got to a negative value. We don't want that to happen, so we're gonna just do a little bit of math. So we're gonna get our current bullets, and we're gonna say, well, if that is less than zero, well, why do I keep doing that? So if it's less than zero, obviously we need to branch. So we're going to branch. So we're going to branch that off. Okay. And if that is true, so if it, if it is less than zero, we're just going to set our current bullets. Right? So we're going to set our current bullets to zero. So it's going to stay at that zero value. Okay. Obviously this section is if we run out of bullets. So we're not gonna use this just yet. What we are gonna do though, is we're gonna add a sequence to here. So we're gonna add a sequence because we need to do something separate for this one because that's what's spawning the bullets. And basically we wanna say here, if say for example, we have more than zero bullets, then we wanna do that. So we need a sequence in that one, but we can plug that node into there because we wanna keep checking to see if our bullets are currently less than zero then obviously we wanna keep setting it to zero. So let's compile and play and let's see what happens. Let's see if it goes under that zero value. And it doesn't, good, All right? So that's what we want to happen. We don't want it to go lower than zero because that makes no sense if it does. But you can still see I can shoot with no bullets. So we need to fix that issue. And that's a very easy fix. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our current bullets and we're gonna to check to see if they are greater. Okay, so if it's greater than zero, okay, so if it's greater than the zero value, then if it's true, we're gonna branch. And if it's a true value, then we're gonna spawn our actor in. So we can put that into that node. Oh, let's actually disconnect that sequence node. And we'll plug it into there. Now, obviously we want to run the branch first. So we're gonna plug our sequence into the branch like that. And now it's gonna check to see, have I got more than zero bullets? If I have, then we can spawn our actor into the world. So let's compile and save and play. And let's see what happens. So I can shoot, I can keep going. And when I'm at zero, you can see I can't shoot anything now. I've got nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's pretty much the system of how you want it to work. I mean, maybe in your spare time, you want to put an ammo drop blueprint. So remember to make those blueprints very easy. You just, in our blueprints folder, add a new blueprint, just like we did with the coins and the health, and then just reset those values to how many bullets you wanna give him um, if he picks up the ammo crate. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you could really do with that system um, to control his bullet flow. I mean, you could spice it up a bit more um, inside the blueprint, so inside here, I mean, you could make it a little bit more attractive. So for example, you might wanna send animation for when he's got no bullets. You know, there's loads of things you can do. 
you don't have to just stick with what I've done in this tutorial. There's a lot more you can do with this. But for basics and to understand how to limit that, this is probably one of the easiest ways to do it. Okay, so really, we updated a HUD, just added a text box, linked it up with a function. Then all we did is create two variables to control our maximum amount of bullets we want to give him, and then obviously control his current bullet count. We created this value, so our custom event, which was going to subtract out our information, and we just plugged it into here. So basically, when he was shooting, we just subtracted every now and again. Made a sequence. The first sequence was to check to see if he had more than zero bullets. Then we would spawn the bullets into the world. If he had less than zero bullets, obviously, then we had to reset the bullet count to zero so it didn't go into that negative value. We don't really want that to happen because that's, ugh, that's not very nice, to be honest. So that's pretty much the tutorial, really. I can't really say much more about that um, in regards to the tutorial itself. There is something I do want to share with you, though, lady and ladies and gentlemen. I left this to the end of the video, um, just for um, just convenience, because if you want to watch the video first, then so be it. I have set up this Patreon page. Um, I've never used this before, so if anyone could guide me, that would be really good. Um, basically, this is to help uh, very, uh, should we say, uh, low YouTubers to make an income from their channel, because obviously we don't really make much from adverts and stuff like that, being a low channel. But if you are really enjoying my, my work and stuff and you do want to support me um, as an artist and educator, jump onto this page, just Patreon for slash Wash Tuts. I'll stick that into the description down below. Um, there are I want to try and get this goal every month. It doesn't have to be that, to be honest. It's just a number I put in, um, in all honesty. And you do get rewards. Um, these are the only ones I can think of for now. I mean, I'll start thinking about some more uh, when it comes to it. Um, and even if you guys want to give me some hints into what you might like as a reward, then uh, please, yeah, let me know in the comment system and then um, we can update that. So thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. It's been great taking you for this. If you'd like to subscribe, like, and share this with all your friends, that would be absolutely amazing. Remember, check out that Patreon page if you like. Thank you very much. I'm Wayne. It was nice taking you for this tutorial and I'll see you again. Goodbye.